we are recording. Good. Welcome to Clinic Night 5. Uh, this is our Clinic Night where we're going to be talking about text vocabularies, i.e. vocabularies for people who are either learning to spell or are spelling to communicate and to communicate with the wider world through Facebook, Spotify, Skype. Uh, mess oh, Messenger doesn't exist anymore, does it, Chris? No, it doesn't. <laughs> Showing my age. Uh, okay, let's get started. Microsoft continued that, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, well, I'm. Uh, this is Hector Minto talking, and I have Chris Edson with me tonight. Chris is one of our lead developers. Uh, I'm talking to you from a hotel room in Stockholm. I'm here for a meeting tomorrow. Uh, so I'm all on my lonesome. Chris is joining us from Bergen. Yes. In Norway. Uh, just hanging out at home. And that's the beauty of the world we live in nowadays, is that we can all just be set here talking to each other around the world. Uh, this is Clinic Night 5, actually not Clinic Night 4, text vocabs for AAC. Uh, just to set the ground rules as we do every time, but I'll be brief. Uh, these are not your normal webinars where we're just going to sit and present to you for an hour. Uh, these are meant to be informal and they are meant to be interactive uh, and we really do hope that you take the opportunity to ask questions of myself and of our development team uh, to find out how to make things happen uh, because if you're thinking it then we should probably know about it. There are no stupid questions. Uh, I've got people on here tonight who are brand new to AAC uh, and we also have some very experienced AAC users on the webinar tonight. Uh, so, so everybody will have different questions. There are no stupid questions, but obviously if the one that's being discussed is not something you're particularly interested in, bear with us and we'll come back to the, uh, the general topic. Uh, if there's anything that does not get covered, uh, that you wish was covered in a bit more depth, then just simply come back to me and message me, Hector Minto, on Facebook and we'll you know, we'll, we'll, we'll set, sort out a one-on-one -on -one with you and, and look into the issue you're having or the, the question you'd like to, to ask. Uh, this is the Text Vocabs AAC Clinic Night. Uh, we are trying to have a different subject every two weeks. Uh, the next one is on uh, Windows Control for Masters, i.e. Advanced Eye Gaze Windows Control. That's in two weeks' time. Uh, so yeah, anything else that you'd like discussed, then obviously just let us know and we'll arrange that as our next clinic. Um, because it's informal, we're going to be switching between my screen, Chris's screen. We're going to be swapping in between different bits of software. Uh, please be patient with us. Give us time to just switch between those applications. And at that point, it's sometimes a good idea just to type in the question that you were, uh, that you want, that you wanted answered. Okay. Uh, the aim of clinic nights is less focused on the, the kind of therapists and the therapist teams uh, that we that we have lots of webinars already aimed at. The general idea with clinic nights is that we have a lot of parents online, a lot of AAC users, and and a lot of professionals as well. And it's really kind of a a collaborative. So so we're not aiming at one particular set of individuals, but it's generally for people who are asking, who want to find out something specific or something specific about a topic. Uh, with us tonight, uh, this is me on the left, I'm Hector, I've got Chris Edson, the developer, and as I say, I've got Ryan and Simon here uh, with us tonight uh, in the chat windows, uh, who are great text-based AAC users who will be asking pertinent questions as we go along. So, when we talk about text or people who use spelling to communicate, we tend to break people down when we develop into two, into two groups. Those people who are currently learning to spell, or who we would term uh, as within that emergent literacy group, uh, these are quite often people who were born with, without speech uh, and have delayed skills in their literacy, which is impacted by their lack of verbal communication. Uh, it's not obvious to, to people but when, when we talk about this, but people who are unable to speak verbally they find it more difficult to spell. And that's simply because they, they can't play with the sounds in their mouths and, 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 and learn how to, to make words come out. 
Uh, and so we design vocabs around that specific group. Uh, I, I would say better than anybody else, actually, we design vocabs around that specific group. Uh, but when we talk about those people uh, and talk about what groups they fall into, we generally term those as people with things like cerebral palsy, Rett syndrome or Down syndrome, uh, where, where people are definitely have the ability to learn literacy, uh, but their physical situation means that it, they've found it difficult to, to, to gain literacy at the same speed that, that, that anybody else might. And then we also have people who have established literacy skills, uh, people who are reading and writing, but due to injury or due to their physical condition, uh, I haven't used AAC. Uh, and these are quite often people who uh, have things like a spinal injury. When I talk about communication, I also talk about things like Facebook, email, uh, text communication with the, with the, through the internet. Uh, but they also may have loss of communication due to a neurological condition such as Parkinson's or motor neuron disease, ALS. I also put, placed into this group adults with cerebral palsy, people who have gain sufficient literacy so fundamentally they're, they're working in a in a text environment the same way anybody else would um, so today through the webinar we will be uh, we'll be looking at a few of these different vocabularies which are aimed at these groups happy with that Chris yeah sounds good good I'm just checking you're still there uh, okay no, no, I'm awake. you're awake <laughs> it's late in Norway right okay uh, yep. One thing to be really clear about at this stage as well is that as we look at people who are using text to communicate, people grow word lists uh, and they grow prediction banks and the computers nowadays learn their spellings. And it's really important to recognize that people are on a journey with AAC, especially those people with progressive conditions. And so nowadays we're seeing a lot of people who might start with an iPad or a Windows tablet with a piece of software. And what we'd like them to be able to do is to, is to get quicker and quicker through text communicating uh, as it learns your words and your word patterns. And then we want those, those learnt words to live with you throughout your AAC journey. So if we look at something like Compass, which is one of our software titles, it's available on the iPad. And the words that it learns will live with you uh, as somebody moves from maybe an iPad through to an iSeries if somebody needs a different access method later, such as iGaze. Likewise, our communicator users will maybe start with a Windows tablet. Here's our M series that I'm pointing at now, the, the M8. They will start to use that as their text communication aid. And all of the work that they're doing as a touch user, what they're doing is investing in their systems that it learns their words, their words patterns, so that when they start using maybe eye gaze later on in their journey uh, or, or switch access, uh, they, they, it's learned their words which makes their experience of communicating with different access methods easier in the future. So it's really important that we recognize that as, a, as, as one of our starting points for people with uh, acquired disabilities. Okay. Emergent literacy. So uh, since Toby and Dynavox became Toby Dynavox, uh, we now have two software titles, Toby Dynavox Communicator 4 and 5, and Toby Dynavox Compass. Uh, and both of these software solutions have options for people who have emergent literacy. Uh, in Communicator, we have what we call literacy, literacy, uh, and Sonos Scribe. And in Compass, the one, the one that's probably of most interest is Core First. Uh, for established people with established literacy, in Communicator we have Sono Key, which is what I would say most people are using, uh, who are Toby Dynavox AAC users and have good literacy skills. Uh, but now that we've got Communicator Five, we're moving to a system which allows modules of text communication, uh, which, we're quite, which I'm calling Communicator 5 Apps. Chris, are you, are you calling them a different name? No, um, we call them the ready-made sometimes or just the page sets uh, because they're just the page sets that come yeah. with Communicator 5, but yeah. Yeah, uh, and, and we'll get onto that in, a, in some detail a little later. Within Compass, we have the text-based page set and navigator. Now, when people talk to me about 
why would somebody want to go with Compass versus Communicator? The easiest way for me to describe it is that Compass, if you are a text communicator, you're living within a kind of a locked ecosystem of communication. So you're kind of the sort of person who might be comfortable just typing to talk, speaking within your own environment, sharing a few photos, but you really just want to live in a kind of an app space and have no complexity beyond your basic text communication. Our Sono key users for Communicator and our Communicator 5 apps users are people who want Facebook, Skype, uh, any, you know, 21st century communication as well as uh, being able to communicate inside the room. Whenever somebody comes to me and says that they would like access to the, to the internet and the outside world as a text communicator, we tend to steer them towards uh, Toby Dynamics Communicator 4 and 5. I have a question, so I'm just going to check the, uh, the question window quickly. Uh, yeah, Joanne, I'd like to add that Rett syndrome should also be added to both reading categories like those affected by CP. I would absolutely agree with that. Uh, yeah, yeah, well said. I'll carry on. <laughs> okay. So back to emergent literacy, people who are who are learning to 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 type uh, and to and to spell to communicate. Some things have happened within the last few years, uh, which are, which are worth talking about. Uh, what we now know is that people who use AAC, who have emergent literacy, they are learning to spell. So people who are using symbols to communicate are, are getting more exposure to text and are learning to spell. What we also now know is that access methods have changed an awful lot within the last five or six years. Uh, when I started 20 years ago, it was either typing with a keyboard or using a switch. So you would have a light writer potentially, or you would use switch access. Now what we have is we have a lot more touch screen access, and that includes the iPad and includes the Windows tablets. But what we also have uh, is eye gaze as opposed to switch access, and more and more people are using eye gaze as opposed to switches. And what this is, what maybe is not obvious to people, is that because people have now have a direct access method, uh, they can play with their letters a bit more. They can play at typing and talking and, and spell words out with a keyboard and play with a keyboard to hear sounds coming out. And this is having an impact. We are definitely seeing that those people who we would term as having emergent literacy, because they're now able to play with letters and make sounds, whereas they would never have done that previously with a, with a switch, uh, we're now seeing that people's literacy is improving because they have a direct access method. This is definitely happening. Uh, so, so, so interesting to think about when we, when we consider, do we restrict symbol users to just their symbol vocabularies or do we open them up to the world of text and spelling so that they can start typing and playing with letter sounds? Definitely a yes from me. Uh, and, and I think this is generally understood within the world of AAC now. Uh, the other thing that's now possible uh, is that it used to be that you would have a symbol vocabulary and then somebody would have to make that decision to move you on to a text vocabulary. Now what we're seeing is, especially in Communicator, people will have symbols for speed and for learning to communicate, but they will also have access to a keyboard within the same user, within the, the same user page set uh, so that people can switch between their communication methods much more readily than they used to. Uh, so, so even though somebody may be a symbol user, they're getting exposure to text and exposure to keyboards, even if somebody has decided they're not ready for it. Uh, so, so when I set up a symbol user ready to, to, to use their symbols to communicate, I will absolutely make sure they have a keyboard there at the same time just for play and for experimentation with letters and letter sounds. So, so, so it's, a, it's a great world to live in uh, compared to what it was 20 years ago for people who are in that situation. Uh, the other thing is that we just released a new app this week. Uh, so even the earliest learners, the visual scene communicators, people who are having hotspots placed around objects now to give them cause and effect, we are now exposing these people to text. So this is a new app for iPad that was released this week. 
uh, somebody presses the button of Buzz Lightyear there, and they hear the sound buzz, but they also get the word shown to them in an animation. Uh, so, so this is a changing world. Uh, the, the, the tools that are available to us today are not the same tools that were available to us uh, three years ago, let alone five or ten. Our designers, such as Chris, are now having to think about the access methods that are available to people now uh, and change our content accordingly. Okay, anything you'd like to say about that, Chris? I've just gone on a long monologue there. <laughs> when you're designing vocabularies, how much are you having to yeah, think, about, uh, um, how, about, think about those things? Well, I mean, we do definitely have take them into account. Um, some things are easier to do in some programs than others, uh, like the appearance of words in um, the snap scene that you're showing. Mm -hmm. um, that's a very nice new feature for the ability to talk and say and show what's going on. Um, in communicator and stuff, it's much more static. I think compass as well is typically more static feedback. But we do definitely think about what sort of feedbacks and reinforcements we're providing, uh, especially auditory, um, at more so than visual for a lot of them. Um, at least right now it is. We're, we're moving into a more visual world as we go forward. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so when we think about when we're putting together an emergent literacy approach, the first motivation is, is not speed, as we're going to see it is with the established text users. The first motivation is, is, is teaching spelling and somebody learning how to spell to communicate. So, so we're thinking a lot, of, a lot here about giving people exposure to words, giving people exposure to word prediction. We're also thinking an awful lot here about first letter sounds. It, it's very difficult for an AAC user to, to to think how to spell the word in every building block, but teaching first letter is certainly something that, that we can teach and that we can work on. The other thing that we need to make clear here when we look at some of these vocabularies in a moment is that the synthesized, the synthesized voices don't support phonemes. They don't support the E's or the U's or the A's. They, they, they just support letter building sounds. Uh, so, so very important when we think when we're teaching literacy when we teach literacy through AAC or expose people to text-based communication through AAC, we don't have all of the tools that, uh, that a literacy coordinator would have in a, in a school uh, through one-on-one -on -one where they're teaching phonemes and the absolute building blocks of spelling. Uh, we tend to start with first letter sounds. Um, some of the tools that we do have available to us, though, we have symbol banks. So the idea that you choose a letter, a first letter sound, and then you jump into a bank full of symbols that start with that letter. We also have something called word prediction phishing in literacy. This is the idea that you can move around and look at words to listen to them once before selecting them a second time. Uh, so th th those, are, those are key tools in literacy. In core first, which is where I'm going to start first, uh, we have symbol word prediction, that's a very important tool, and one on that I particularly like, which is synonym prediction, so that when we get people choosing words, we, we expand the vocabulary by offering them more similar words. So I'm just going to switch software and just, and just give you a quick run through of core first in Compass, uh, which is here. So this is a vocabulary for somebody who's on the pathway to literacy. We would always want to give somebody their core words so that they could start building a sentence, I need. We would then want to give them exposure to banks of words here. But we might also want to take them into a keyboard. Uh, I'm just going to turn that keyboard on. Okay. So we've got I need here, and then if somebody who was starting to spell would be able to jump into their keyboard here, uh, and here they would have next word, word prediction, I need to, I need a, I need some, I need you, I need help, but they would also then be able to choose their first letter, 
Uh, let's go with television and type. And here we get their T words, their T E words, their T E L words, and eventually we get to television. Okay, we have some options available to us now. If I go into the settings within Compass, uh, I can go into my rate enhancement here, my prediction settings, and here you can see some of the options that word, we have for word prediction. The ones that I'm going to look for uh, are next letter prediction. In fact, that's the only one that I'm going to look for right now. Just to run through what these are, though, predict words only once is fairly self-explanatory. Context prediction uh, means next word word prediction. Uh, don't predict words on buttons is if the button if the word is already on a button on the page, don't offer it in a word prediction list, and obviously enabling learning. Maybe I should turn that on. Click OK, and back. OK, let's do this whole thing again. So we will just clear. I need. Now, as I type this time, you'll see that I get next letter prediction, which really helps somebody who's learning to spell. It, it, it slims down their selection to the only letters that can possibly uh, be appropriate there. OK, so here I need TE and then I need television here. OK, if I go back to my core, one other nice feature here is that if I say I like in fact, let's not do that. Let's just uh, clear again. I want. You'll see here that it gives me my verb forms to give exposure to the different verb forms of want. But at the same time, it offers me two, synony two synonyms, easy for me to say, uh, which allow me to expand my vocabulary and start to think, mm, actually, yeah, want's a good word, but I choose is also a way of saying that, or I prefer... And you can see here, it swaps the word out. So, so expanding somebody's vocabulary is just as useful, uh, especially when they're, an when they're on that emergent literacy pathway. OK. Please type as we go along. Uh, it's really important that you, uh, you ask questions about that. I realize that some of the people on the group are less exposed to compass as they might be to communicator. Uh, so let's jump into communicator. Okay, so I'm going to show you literacy first. Literacy comes under the symbol page sets and you can see here we have five options for what we call literacy. Uh, the idea of literacy is if I go in at the basic level the idea is that we should expose all people who are on a literacy pathway to letters uh, and we should try to teach first letter. We should try to teach people that, you know, find the first letter, then choose from your word selection. So at the very first level, if I choose F here, I'm exposed to a bank full of F words. Uh, this gives me the ability to just at a very basic level, choose my letter, choose my word. Choose my letter, uh, choose my word, choose my letter, I'm just looking at foods, nothing in there, undo, let's maybe go for B and banana. Okay, nice and simple. As I move up through the levels of literacy, however, and go to something a bit more in-depth. We might lose the symbols, just give exposure to the letters, and then I want to show you a couple of very cool features. So I'm going to unplug my headset now so you can hear my speakers. And just check you can all still hear me. Yeah, you're a bit quieter, but we can still hear you. Okay, so here we are with, again, a keyboard to start typing. You'll notice that we've also introduced some 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 uh, word starting symbols here in ch and sh and th, okay, because they're also important for starters. For some of you who know all about phonemes, 
you'll notice that some of the oohs and the e's and the a's are not in there and that's because they don't start words typically that tends to be through our through our vowels um, but as i choose a word a, a letter here same. i get letter prediction the same way i did in compass that's important but i have this really nice feature uh, which if i go into functions and settings i'll show you where we find it I have the ability to double click symbols or words before I type them out. So now think about this from somebody who's learning how to, you know, how to spell and how to choose their words at this point. If I choose my C word here, I get word prediction. Now I might not at this stage know what all of these words are, especially as they're not K words. I mean, I might have been taught that that C is uh, is my K sounds. But obviously when I look at this one or press this this key here, cells. I can hear it. I can hear cells. Considering. Considering. Centre. Centre. Concerning. And concerning. But you'll notice that it didn't type them out into my message window. And the idea here is that I should be able to fish around. Centre. Listening. Concerning to the word that I might want. And when I hear the word I want, I think, yeah, I did want center. center. And then for the, if I press it a second time, center. it types it out into my list for me. OK, so it gives people this, this ability to play with the words, search for the word, find it, even if they're not 100% sure which word they're going for. So let's do it one more time. If I just choose W. w. And maybe if I choose W-H. W -H. And I've got... Okay, I know I want what, what? and choose what? it again to select. Okay, so it's this idea that it allows the children, I'd say children, the person with emergent literacy, to, to, to play with the words, choose a letter, see some words, click on them, hear them before selecting. Okay. Just got a question, I'm just going to take this quickly. Uh, is this system generally used as a communication aid or more as a teaching tool alongside another system or does it depend on the person? It's such a good question, Charlotte. Thank you. Um, it, you've got it exactly right. Some people are being pushed down this literacy communication side of things. And for those people, it's probably their communication aid. It's a, an extremely quick way to access text uh, or, or if you're a a ded dedicated text communicator. But let's say I had somebody who was using something like Sonoflex and I wanted them to be exposed to play with keyboards. Uh, what I would have is something like this. I'll just demonstrate it quickly. If I go to my home page and into my setup wizard, what I might say for this person is that I would like them to be able to have uh, literacy with letters and I would like them to have Sonoflex as their home page. I'll just untick a few of these others. And when I go to their home page, uh, no, okay, let me just untick a few others. Remember, clinic nights are informal, so just give me a minute. <laughs> uh, so I'll just make sure I've got no other things ticked. My page sets. Let's just untick this one. That should be me done. Go to my home page. Yep. Uh, where's Bruno Mars coming from? Okay, just give me a second. to change my order and I'll just move Bruno down click OK and go to my home page now you can see here somebody might have Sonoflex for symbol communication and when they exit out of here and go back to their home page they can then flip into literacy okay so it's absolutely possible for somebody to have two page sets that they can jump in between and access and all you have to do is type uh, is tick which boxes you want to appear on their home page for anybody who has 
a simple dedicated communication strategy, I would absolutely encourage giving them simple literacy and encouraging them to play with the letters, choose the letters, see some word prediction or see some symbols being predicted as they choose because all the time we're just exposing somebody to a literate environment. Uh, yeah, and, and as I said before, because the access method of choice is typically now more to do with touchscreen or eye gaze, this is not a problem to do it. It's not as if you're going to cause a switch user lots of delays and problems. Uh, this is not a good strategy for a switch user, I would say. You may have to, to uh, <laughs> do some more intelligent programming to make it easier for them to jump between both methods. Okay, any comments so far, Chris? No, I think you're covering everything pretty well. Okay, I'll carry on. Uh, if I was to go all the way to the top level of literacy, I think that's worth a quick look because it's a very comprehensive text communication aid. So you can see here I have my keyboard and my symbol prediction all going at the same time on the same page. Uh, let's see. Uh, Let's type a sentence. Hi. Uh, I. Great. Put my space I. in. Th. And then I get my th words. So I'm looking here to my verbs and I can see I've got think That's straight it. away. And I'm going to go with th again. I can that. browse that. over my words and choose that. that. Great. Second choice. Choose my I. G. No, you'll also notice as I type, it says G, G, R. And then, because it now has got to G, R, E being what could be a word, it says gr. Gria. And great. So it is giving some sound feedback as we go along, as somebody plays with the letters and spells. Okay. Good, right. Next on the list is Sono Scribe. So let's just go into Sono Scribe. Now, the best way to describe Sono Scribe is again more of a, a locked in communication environment. Uh, it's text only, no symbols this time, so it would really assume that somebody really is, you know, spelling and has good word recognition. Uh, but what it does is it has intelligent prediction lists built in. Uh, so even if somebody is starting from here with core words and is not typing, as I, I type along drinking. and choose nouns, as I type here, it will give me just G nouns. It won't give me other other categories at this point. Uh, if I was to go back and choose adjectives or describing words, you can see here my G word prediction has now moved into adjectives. And if I was to choose verbs, uh, it then gives me G verbs. I'm not sure how Gallivant got into the top four G verbs, Chris. I have no idea either. I think, unfortunately, you have to ask the German man who programmed it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but uh, the point being is that, that... You can gallivant around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is a very quick way to, to, to start producing a lot of text. Uh, and it really helps somebody who is that um, somebody with emergent literacy uh, to start thinking about how they compartmentalize their, their words. Uh, you can see here we have... Medical Actually, care. real quick, I hate to interrupt you, but I do act know why Gallivant is there. I just, I just remembered. Um, if you use words, you get a frequency of use, and the words at the beginning are the most frequent used. But if there's not a frequency of use associated with it, it's just alphabetical. So you'll see gabble, gag, gallivant, gallop are all alphabetical, but go, which has been used before on this machine, shows up at the beginning. Right. So the more you type and the more you talk, the less it will become alphabetic, it will become more on frequency of use, but the default is alphabetic. Yes. Great. 
something I did not know. Sorry, just, I could have, I, I just could thought have, it would be I useful have, information. <laughs> okay, uh, if I just go back uh, and come back in from the top, you'll notice here as well, it, it offers you the option of starting with typing or starting with core words and phrases. Again, that, that is something that, that is specific to the, to the user. But you'll notice when you come in for the first time, it says to you, is this something you want to do every time or only this time? As soon as you click every time, this will become your default page. Okay, one of the things that where this is starting to veer into somebody who has established literacy uh, is you'll see that it has here phrase banks. Uh, all to do with your personal situation. So the idea here is that you would populate your, your, your phrase banks based on medical care, emergency calls, social phrases. One of the easiest acceleration methods that anybody has as a text communicator is to type something once and then save it into a phrase bank so that they can then access it, access it later without having to type the whole thing again. Uh, we have some very cool things to show you in Communicator 5 that might start to make these things redundant in the future. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Uh, but when we get on to advanced, what we call abbreviation expansion a bit later, uh, I start to wonder whether people would even bother to go to phrase banks rather than just type in an abbreviation. But that's for discussion in a little while. Okay. I'm just going to pop back to my uh, presentation. Um, so some other things to consider, uh, both in Communicator and Compass, some things that are having an impact on the lives of people with emergent literacy, or some people just who have poor literacy or, or, or make lots of spelling mistakes. Um, word prediction used to be very, uh, you know, had for some very hard rules. As soon as you typed a letter and you, you got out of sync on your word, here if I was typing the word list, but I accidentally typed the E instead of the S. As soon as you got to L-I-E, that was it. Your word prediction list would literally just offer you L-I-E words. And you would have to recognize that you'd made a typing mistake or or, or not. Uh, you would have to recognize that to be able to, to remedy it. Now, word prediction is becoming extremely intelligent. And Chris, you've got much more experience in, in in, in what SwiftKey is doing. Uh, but essentially, SwiftKey now can recognize that you've made a mistake. Chris? It, it guesses. It guesses as much as it knows. Um, so SwiftKey is really good at predicting words based on context. Um, the SwiftKey language model has information about preceding words. Uh, I think it's like two words is what they use. Um, and they have word pairs. They'll often try to predict things based on what's come before. And it kind of will guess or try to guess what you want, even if you don't type it. Hmm. So it, it'll, it'll, it'll assume you're not typing perfectly. Uh, it was designed for people who are typing on tiny phone screens. So it knows you're going to miss hit things. Hmm. And it's really powerful. You can misspell something and then hit the correct prediction. And it will add it and replace whatever the misspelling was. Now it's really interesting and, and maybe people can comment in the in, in the chat window, uh, but there, there are a few advantages and disadvantages of this and that, that I think we should quickly discuss them um, because obviously if we're trying to teach somebody to spell we want to kind of force somebody through spelling it correctly. Yeah, that, 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 that makes sense. You know, we want them to go eat through letter yeah. by letter and spell the word. Uh, so if somebody does make a mistake and, and then the word is still offered, there are some people making the argument to me that, that it's not kind of really forcing them to learn their spelling. I, 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 my personal view is that even if somebody made a mistake, even if they did spell something incorrectly and the correct word is offered and they can then choose it, they are still being exposed to the correct spelling. And especially if we're in compass and have symbol prediction reinforcing the word at that point. So, so I think overall it's a win. Uh, I don't know if you have anything to say about it. I think so as well. 
Um, I think that also the rate predict or rate enhancement is much better with this system um, because it can predict very long words off of two or three letters. And if you have a misspelling in the third or fourth letter and you're spe typing an eight or nine letter long word, the old system may not have told you you had done something wrong until you were eight or nine letters into it. At that point, you would realize that you've messed up. But Whereas with the new system, you can should we, should we um, very quickly examples? figure it out. Should we try some yeah. um, So write summer. No, obviously, we do of course. Yeah, sorry, go on. All right, S U. Uh, yeah. There's, there's an example. Um, yeah. So we've typed So it doesn't predict very well there. I think it would work better if we had some sentence before it. But if you look here, we've typed in summer. We've not spelt it correctly. Yeah, it are. And then now it tells you. It, it's offered us super, uh, but it's also offered us summer. So, so somebody hopefully would look at that and think, oh, okay, I didn't spell it correctly, but it still offered it to me. I still saw the word that I wanted. I've got a symbol to kind of reinforce it to me. I can make that choice, and then it will force it correctly. What was your example, Chris? Oh, I was just going to say that if you were to type a longer sentence, like it, the Swift key prediction may have actually been able to, like, um, it's really hot this summer. If you type that, it may even just S U M E still tell you summer. So it's it's a very positive reinforcement earlier on. But you see how quickly you're typing at this. You you only need one or two word or one or two letters for the most part to find the yeah yeah word you're trying to find. Yeah, so, so we've got season. So it's a very um, quick. Um, also, there's one thing just to be said. Um, I don't, I don't want to be the quote young rebel of the thing, but uh, spelling is a skill that is going out of style with all of the word prediction or with word prediction engines and with correction in all sorts of typed. Since it's no longer handwritten, written, and everything is digital, the ability to get your point across and communicate is much more important to do that quickly and efficiently than it is to maybe have every single letter correct. Yeah. And if the system you're using is assisting you with getting your message out and getting to be able to talk, I think that's winning a lot more than it is possibly someone doesn't realize some are spelled with two M's. Yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. I, I, I think that's worth that's been worth spending some time on. Uh, there's a few comments coming in on the on the chat pane, which is really important. I just deal with quickly. So somebody's saying, uh, "See real benefit for clients with other conditions alongside their primary condition." Uh, for example, it'd be great if you had a client with MND who was also dyslexic. I, I, I can absolutely see that. And and yeah. now that we have modular systems, it, it's really important that therapists, teachers, parents you know, expose people to more than one option, I think. Uh, I've got another question, another comment. I find it very useful because I'm quite a quick typer but make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so the Swift key prediction is getting the quick typer who's just rushing on with getting the message. Uh, it, it's getting them out of jail <laughs> on occasion. Uh, what is that keyboard you're using? Is this communicator four or five, right? Guys, this, this keyboard that we've just been looking at is core first in Compass. Uh, so one of the advantages that Compass has over Communicator is it has symbol prediction. Uh, that, that is just one of the features that's been in that software from, since, from day one. Symbol prediction is not available in Communicator as it stands today. So if, it, if it's specifically this keyboard you like with the letter prediction, your best equivalent option in communicator is literacy, L-I-T-E-R-A-A-C-Y. Uh, that will give you the, le the, the letter prediction and then give you symbols uh, on, the, on the static symbol line. Um, however, if you want live symbol prediction, that, that's Compass. Okay, just a couple of more comments. Um, 
Pam had a question about starting with Compass and then moving over to Communicator. Um, that is, of course, possible. Um, if you do that sort of switch over, it, you'd probably want to wait till the user was fully using a keyboard full time, I think, before you would make the switch over to Communicator. If you start with, say, symbol content on Compass, I would probably stick with Compass through the transition to literacy. Um, I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So, so, so just to be, just to clarify the question again, is Compass a possible starting point and then moving on to Communicator? There are lots of reasons why one might not want to do that. Uh, not, yeah. you know, specifically, you're going to have to learn two completely different pieces of software. Uh, so, so that's not for everybody. Um, I think there are enough features in Communicator to, especially within the literacy keyboards, uh, to, to give you a lot of these features. And also remember, you could also maybe run Compass just as a, a, an exercise occasionally, just, you know, just for play and for fun uh, on the same machine uh, without necessarily even having to buy it. You could do that in, in, in demo mode. Um, but no, it is a different program. We should be clear about that. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Good. Right, back to my presentation. Let's try and keep to some kind of... Uh, <laughs> scheduled tonight <laughs> okay uh, so we've dealt with uh, this concept of double pr double press is critical when we're in literacy in communicator okay I'm gonna move us on to you know what it was probably a, a larger group oh, before we move on there was one really important one I wanted to bring up uh, about symbol sticks and that is that it is not currently functioning in communicator 5 um, so you demoed symbol sticks and the um, prediction engine based off of uh, predicting words for different word classes. Uh, uh, so in, describe, in sorry. So describe you're talking about. Oh, so describe. Yes, that's right. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we should be clear so about that. Get a little mix of words. The, the do you want to spend a moment on that, Chris? So, so the the custom dictionaries within Sonoscribe. Uh, do you want to explain what a custom dictionary yeah. is first? Yeah. So, yeah, Communicator 4 doesn't use Swift key predictions, and it loses out on a lot of the values that we've been talking about, um, which is why, as I said earlier, when we were talking about why is Gallivant number three on the list of predictions, and that's just because it's alphabetical. We don't know anything more. We don't have a predefined system of how frequently people use Gallivant in the English language, uh, which makes the prediction system kind of poor and not effective when you're trying to have a quick rate enhancement. Um, so in, we made the transition to Communicator 5, we decided to switch over to the SwiftKey prediction system and remove our old prediction system that we were running in 4, which was you know made by our, us in the 90s. Um, one of the things we lost with that was the ability to have custom dictionaries. Um, now SwiftKey manages the dictionary itself, and we tell SwiftKey when we learn new words, and SwiftKey adds the new word plus all of the context that SwiftKey needs to know to predict the word correctly um, to its own engine. And in Communicator 5, that means that some features for Communicator 4 page sets aren't working. Um, and Sonoscribe. Yes, Sonoscribe is, has lost the ability to predict words of specific um, word classes. Um, the way it, it works in Sonoscribe is we actually switch to a dictionary that it's only uh, question words or only verbs and then predict from that dictionary. And since we no longer have those dictionaries functioning in Communicator 5, it's not working right now. Um, we're looking into getting it up and running again, uh, seeing what's necessary to get that page set to work. but. For the short term, that's not that's not an option if you only have five. Yeah. So just to clarify, when we moved from Communicator Four to Communicator Five, we just we made the decision to move to the much more to the word prediction system called SwiftKey, which gives much better rate enhancement. Uh, but it made Sonoscribe's custom dictionaries unusable. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, yeah. So any of you that are on Sonoscribe, and I have to say it is a smaller, it's probably 
one it has a very small number of users uh, globally um, but but you guys should definitely stick with four until we've uh, until we've fixed this issue okay right so people who have who are absolutely text communicators however uh, people who maybe have motor neuron disease uh, people who who have had spinal cord injuries or adults with cerebral palsy girls with Rett syndrome who've got great literacy going uh, the, the the motivation to communicate changes so in all of the emergent literacy uh, vocabularies that we looked at earlier uh, the, the, the focus was definitely on literacy learning okay and getting used to letter sounds and getting used to words coming up with symbols to support uh, as soon as we moved somebody who is a pure text communicator uh, their first motivation is speed speed of communication and rate enhancement uh, absolutely fundamentally the things that will keep them in the room keep somebody relevant in a conversation when I'm talking to some of you guys on uh, on Skype now uh, I don't know whether you're an AAC user or not nowadays because <laughs> you're so quick at typing out so uh, I was having a chat with Ryan uh, before we started tonight and and you know a new message is coming out every 30 seconds how would I know whether he was using an eye gaze or not I, I simply wouldn't because we've given you a vocabulary that keeps you fast yeah uh, and has learnt with you to, to make you fast there is a second motivation that's come out in the last number of years and that is what I call 21st century AAC uh, communicating with the person in the room is no longer just you know what somebody wants to do with their communication aid so when we see people who are text communicating uh, in a locked-in system uh, such as uh, core first there uh, as you saw, saw us using uh, you know you're only communicating in the room and that's fine that's 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 that priority but now people want to access Facebook Skype Twitter these things are absolutely just as important to somebody who is a text communicator in fact you one could make the argument that your email and your Facebook and your Skype is perhaps more important than the than the speech in the room uh, so vocabularies need to have been adapted for this for this what we call 21st century AC some great features here the evolution of word prediction the ability to phrase bank quickly uh, this acceptance that no two AAC users are the same one person might want uh, Skype and uh, let's say Spotify that as the most important thing somebody else might want their uh, you know their music system uh, and Facebook to be the, the most important thing so we've got to allow people to quickly edit page sets without it being difficult to do and fundamentally what we believe in at Toby Dynavox is that the user must be able to do this having difficulty hearing it as well have I got a bit of a uh, um, I've noticed some audio messages coming up can you hear me okay we have some audio problems Chris have you got me Hector yeah I'm just waiting for the signal to come back if we would like though Chris okay we may just have to wait a minute till uh, the audio improves to start working again um, I will take over presenting as well hi Chris why not so yes I think I'm back hello Hector <laughs> you can take over that's Are you great. Back? carry on <laughs> yeah Sorry I think that. you're back now that I have the presenting that's great I think you should carry on I think I think that may be the difference there yeah please do okay um, can, can you see my screen I'm don't have any visual feedback here that I'm presenting so I can see your screen I'm not sure what to do okay good 
So I will hide the questions as well, I think. Um, yeah. So um, in Communicator 5, we have done a lot for the ability to communicate quickly and fast and be able to interact with people around you and over the internet with keyboards. Um, one of the um, useful things we've done is we've stand for all of Communicator 5. So you can choose a specific keyboard and use and interact with that keyboard from any page set. Um, previously in versions of Communicator 4 there would be a different keyboard in each version of the text message page set or the email page set or something like that. And that meant that as a user it was really hard to know exactly where things were. Every keyboard functioned a little bit differently and you lost a lot of speed or confidence in what you were doing. Um, this new one lets you modify. Um, you can, for instance, use this to be your keyboard for every page set, go in and modify it in edit view and change the positions of keys around, make a custom layout, change how the predictions work. Um, and it just seems it will then be your keyboard everywhere. And your modified version will kind of become your keyboard. And it's really nice for people to have ownership of that, to be able to fix things that they find problematic. Um, some people don't like the phrase predictions because it has a direct select. So if you look at the phrase prediction to read it, sometimes it will select it and print it. So people uh, will change and have the phrase prediction buttons in a layout that they prefer. And it's all completely customizable for the user. Um, one of the funnest things about the keyboards, um, as Hector was alluding to, is we now have the ability to store phrases. So as you talk, oops. you can see as I was typing that predictions appeared in these three and or phrase predictions appear here and word predictions appear down here. If I speak this phrase out loud, I have a setting that says speech history recording here in the, my keyboard settings. If I have this on, the, every phrase I speak Hello there, Hector. will be added automatically to my speech history. I have speech history for <laughs> some random Chinese and some random Japanese I've been typing. Uh, testing these keyboards out, but the last hundred phrases I've spoken out will be saved there. Along with that, um, you can, oops, sorry. Along with that, you also have just normal phrases that you can create and manage through your phrase list. Um, and so, this allows you to very quickly have access to things you've said if you, for instance, lose all of what you've been typing, you can start again and there's the last thing I spoke. Um, it's really helpful if you have full sentences or uh, paragraphs that you've wrote that you spoke out and then you left to went something else and then you needed to get it back. But also one fun thing about this is we now have a abbreviation expansion feature that uses these phrases. So instead of typing the actual phrase out, hello there Hector, I can instead type H T and you'll see predictions that start with hi this, hello there, hi this, and if I type H I'll get only hello there Hector. So we take and auto-abbreviate everything in your phrases. So if you have a, a long phrase you want to abbreviate or expand, you only have to type the first letter of each word and then your phrase will appear very quickly. Um, it especially helps if there's no way that those letters would appear. So I don't want to go. I can just clear this and type I W. 
word IWT very quickly starts predicting phrases that are I want to something. This is abbreviation expand is very funny, right? And because all of the phrases tools, my phrases, you can manage your phrases you control over the phrase or adding a new phrase. Phrase, you can manage these yourself so you can have predictions and whatever you want to say, sentence fragments if it were, um, that you say often and you can combine them quickly using abbreviation expansion, two, three letters and you have a full sentence. It's a very quick, very powerful way to type. It will appear. I can click the OK button and now we have in the body of my email, the sentence, or the two sentences I just wrote, and I will type one more thing real quick for you, just so you get another view of how this goes. Um, I'm back if you can hear me, Chris. Yeah, I can hear you. Well, I heard static, <laughs> so I assumed that was you. <laughs> so the chocolate ones, chocolate cookies are my favorite. And let's see, I got a comment of, wow. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad you like that. Uh, are you hearing me, Chris? Yes, I can hear you. Can yeah, you I mean, hear me? yeah. So you're you're looking at uh, at dwell free. Yep. Yeah, I mean, dwell free is, you know, it is lightning quick. Wow is the only word to describe it. Right, wow is a good word to describe it, but obviously, it really does require somebody to be a fantastic text user and very familiar with the keyboard, because you don't want somebody to be hanging around looking for the letter because that that causes yeah. problems. Uh, and also, you have to be able to spell in your head as you go a mm. little bit faster than you would with a traditional keyboard. So with the normal 12 keyboards, you can kind of pause and think for a second, wait, how do I spell that? Yeah. Um, spelling isn't 100% important in this keyboard. Um, if you misspell or if, for instance, I'm trying to hit the I and I hit the O instead and I just move on, the keyboard will figure it out. So it's not 100% important, but you do have to have some idea, and that, that requires very fluent literacy, hmm. not, not so much emerging, or if you're just like finally getting comfortable with it, this would not be a, a good keyboard to start out with. The, the way I describe it to people is, is it's, it's like playing an instrument or playing a computer game. You, you, kind of, you, you have to invest some time learning how, to, how it works for you. Uh, but but after a while, you really start to see the benefits. You make a few mistakes along the way. Some strange words start coming out, and you didn't really mean to type them. But if you if you really invest in it as a text user, it becomes extremely quick. Okay, I was kind of worried about that last word because I was all over the map on it, but yeah. So I've been using Dwell Free for over a year, um, but at the same time, I use it two sentences a day, hmm. something like that. Like, I mean, when I'm really typing, I'll be testing and I'll write 50 sentences in a day, yep. but then I won't test or use it for a week. So it's a really low usage rate for me, even though I've been doing it forever. Yeah. Um, and it's it's a skill. It takes a lot of practice, but it's definitely doable. Mm. 
Hmm. So, um, I'm sorry, I, I had to disappear for a short while while the internet let me down. Um, could we spend a few minutes looking at the, the idea of a modular home screen? Uh, of course. To, and, and can we also look at how to set your system keyboard? Because these are two very important things for people to, to consider. Yep. So, you have a modular page, or home page. Uh, everything that you see here, this is my home page, and I can add or remove things to it as I want. Um, you can see you, I have multiple pages. Um, I, have, I have some things that I have deleted off my system but not off of here, which is why they show up with this missing thing. But that's pretty easy to take care of. I can edit my home page, which brings me to this page set where I can select and edit. So if I wanted, for instance, Skype to be earlier, because I use it more, uh, this is particularly relevant for scanning users, so that you can set it up that they have the most frequent items over here and the least frequent farther away that take longer. Um, but maybe I, for instance, have a preference for making the colors match and line up into Tetris pieces, so that's what I do. Um, but if I come over here, I can select sports, and I can just remove that page set, and it's gone. Because these were, per, these were custom page sets I saved and then later deleted off my computer, so I no longer need those to hang around. If I want to add a new page set, I just click Add Page Sets, and then I kind of navigate to the page set I want. So I want to add a Firefox browser, and I'll add that to my home page. I want to get rid of the music player, I can remove that from my home page. If I close this, I go back to edit. I can review how my page set now looks since I've removed and added pages. And I like that. I can change the grid size. So if I want more items on my home page, I can choose to have a different grid size. So this is what my home page would look like now if I exit. I have a 7 by 5 grid, I think is what this was. Yeah, 7 by 5. Um, I personally like the 6 by 4 or 5 by 3 because they're just a little bit larger and easier to hit, and it doesn't look quite as cluttered. So you have this nice page set for your home page now. So this ties um, into the idea that, that, that an individual user will have different priorities at different points, and they can simply edit their own home page. Um, can we look at custom keyboards or how to how to set One, specific keyboards uh, oh yeah. that run across all applications? Yeah. One thing just to mention real quick before we move on. These items here, exit communicator, edit home page, navigate into all page sets, even settings here, these are all just items on your home page and can be removed or added. So if, for instance, some users may not need the ability to edit their own home page or exit communicator, if you need um, to lock them into the system a bit more, um, or if complexity of accidentally running into edit home page is something that they would not need or want, you can remove it. It's communicator is designed to assist people who are completely independent all the way to people who are very dependent. And the home page system is set up to help with that as well. Um, which is also why we have the settings we've been working with. Um, so for instance, the new keyboard, you can change your keyboard and it's fully accessible. You don't have to switch to Windows control or anything like that to try and work with this. You can just I want a Chinese keyboard or a Japanese keyboard because I have one of those in my system and I can just choose that as my keyboard. Just select the keyboard I want and choose it. I can also view it to verify that it's the keyboard I want and yes, that's the keyboard I want. And can you just make, make clear to everybody listening that, that as soon as you've changed that keyboard, that will appear in multiple page sets? Yeah. So, um, like earlier when I was on the um, email keyboard, I was using Dual Free because I have Dual Free set as my keyboard. But if I change my keyboard to Grid and I go back to my home page, 
I also have change keyboard directly on my home page. So everything that's in here in settings, you can have directly on your home page as well. So if you just want brightness settings and you don't want to have to come in all the way into settings and then brightness settings every time you want to change the brightness on your screen, you can have just brightness settings on your home page. Just add the page through tools. And, or not tools, sorry, through settings. Obviously through settings. <laughs> Add don't pitch. Um, but as I was earlier in email, and I tried to make a new email and send that email through my well free. Now when I go into body, I will have this grid keyboard, because that's the keyboard I chose. And everywhere I open keyboards, this grid keyboard will appear. So if I write an email, it's there. If I go to my text files and want to write something, it's there. If I want to add a new contact, I'll add Hector as a contact. It's here. Um, the other thing to just make really clear to everybody is that this, the keyboards are now fully editable. So once you've edited a keyboard in one place and perfected your keyboard... Oh, we covered that. It, you were gone. Oh, I was we gone. We covered that. that. Great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, no problem. But yeah, we, we talked Technology. a little bit about some different editor edits that could go on and that you can, make, you can customize that keyboard to be whatever you want. In okay. fact, you can make a new keyboard from scratch and this is something we have not made yet internally for us but it's something you can do you um, and we've talked a little bit about whether or not we would or something or how but you technically can come in edit a symbol keyboard or a symbol page set and turn that into a keyboard or you can start from scratch like if you want a specific grid layout you can make create a new page set and make a 4 by 4 grid and just turn this into a brand new keyboard. All you have to do is under page set properties there is a um, page set type and that is just set to communicator keyboard um, and then you have some options here these, um, there, there's a fun idea in communicator keyboards that we open different varieties of keyboards and I can show you that I think best if I open a keyboard and then just show you what the different varieties are. So let's open all page sets and we'll view this and edit it. So right now this is speech output mode. Um, it's categorized by only having one closed keyboard button. It has a bit more space um, and you can only just leave the keyboard or speak. Um, this is the version that if you just add the keyboard to your home page and you open that keyboard you'll enter this mode and you'll be able to speak and use the keyboard. Uh, the next mode is um, multi-line. It has a confirmation which will send the text back into whatever called it. So if you opened a text message and wanted to write a text message, you click confirm and it, the keyboard will enter the text from the message window into the text message. But you also have a cancel, so you can leave the keyboard without actually entering text. Uh, the important thing about multi-line is it has a lot of ways to move cursors and select and copy text. Single line has less options and they're all kind of available on the front page. This is for entering email headers. Well, oh, no, sorry, not email headers. Um, this is for entering, I think, text messages or the my phrases. I think I got the same keyboard when I tried to enter a contact name. It's things that are expected to not be heavy text editing. Uh, for instance, you can only write so much for a contact name. You can't have 12 pages worth of contact name. Uh, 
email address is separate. It's similar to the single line, only it has additional words and options and suggestions for email specific actions so you don't have to switch to symbols or something to be able to have those. And the last mode is numbers. Straightforward, it's just if you have to type in a phone number or something, this is the keyboard that appears. And it's just larger keys, easier to interact with, um, less complexity, prevents you from entering things that you shouldn't be able to enter into phone numbers. So can you just quickly show an example of when one of those alternative keyboards would be called upon? Yeah, I can show that pretty easily. First, let me set that keyboard as my communicator keyboard. I have a lot, so you can see how I have all of these keyboards in my keyboards or in my change keyboards. There are only four keyboards that are included with communicator. It's dual free, grid, regular, and large keys. And all, all the, of the rest of these, custom. these are all custom keyboards I've messed around with and done something with. And they can be and shared. I, they can be shared with different people? Yeah. So um, if, all if, you have to do yeah. is put one of these in your my page set folder and it works. Communicator picks it up, shows it here and lets you use it. So one of the comments was that somebody spends, uh, I, think, I think it was Helen was saying that she spends ages kind of reprogramming keyboards for different people. Uh, what, what you'd be able to do is create your custom one once and then share it between lots of different devices, set it as your system keyboard, and then it shows up throughout your page set. Yep. Good. And it just, it'll, you only have to modify it once. Um, sometimes if you have a group of people who have a similar need, then yep. you can make a base modification and then just tweak that for each person. And you only have to do it once. But if I set this as my keyboard, now when I click speak, speak is a fun word um, thing. So this is a Japanese keyboard. And I can actually turn Japanese on if I feel like it. So. And come on, impress people. There we go. So um, this is my Japanese custom keyboard I have. And I can do my Japanese things with it, and I can speak. But um, the speak here is um, it's a home page function that opens your keyboard. Um, this is useful for people who change keyboards. So for instance, if you use Dwell Free a lot in the mornings or during school hours or something, but then use a regular keyboard, which is slightly less strenuous to use um, at other times when you don't need to communicate as quickly, you can change between the keyboards and whatever your current set keyboard is will always be opened when you click speak. So that way you don't have to have both keyboards on your home page or the three keyboards you use or whatever it is. Um, you can just click speak and it will always open your keyboard in speech output mode, which is the mode that has only the one exit and the speak. If however I wanted to write a new contact, I apparently did not save my Hector. I now have the same keyboard in one line editing. So all of the editing I can do is here. Um, the window is smaller and I have the ability to cancel as well as confirm the text I enter. Let's just see what this does. Can I? I cannot. Hmm. Apparently, Hector, you don't want to be turned into kanji. Um, but we will accept that. And there's Hector. If I want to type an email address for him, now you'll see that the email version is here with the different additional keys. So you can Hector is at 
somewhere. Sorry, that's an IME thing because it doesn't let me confirm the text. Somewhere.com and it returns that text. And then if I want to type a phone number for him, now you see I have the phone number version. Um, if you're making a custom keyboard, these are not vital. Like the subtle differences between the different modes of the keyboard are helpful um, and they are powerful for rate enhancement. But if you're making a custom keyboard and say you work with multiple people who each would want a different keyboard, then it may not be worth the time it, for them or they may not have the interest in having uh, the email version be different than the single line version. Um, you might be able to do one email version that also functioned as the single line or um, if it's a very, very custom keyboard with um, like say a four by five keyboard that's multi-step, um, it could be very possible that there's not enough customization possible for that keyboard to make all of the versions necessary. So when you're making a new keyboard, um, and let me just go into my keyboard and edit in there. So when you're making or modifying or editing a keyboard, under the properties, we have a, this just points to a page within the page set and says, this is the page you open if you want single line. But these can all be set to the same page. Um, it's perfectly valid to just set all of these to one page and no matter what version of the page set would be opened, um, then you would get the same multi-step page set with the keyboard because some of those keyboards just are so pressed for space. There's not, there's not enough adaption you can, or adaptation you can do to really get rate enhancement or get efficiency gains by having the different versions. Um, so the key takeaways so, yeah. for Communicator 5 in terms of rate enhancement are uh, the abbreviation expansion plus, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 how it allows, how SwiftKey now allows for mistakes uh, and, and we'll just kind of blast you through it and still offer you the same words even if you, even if you made mistakes. The automatic phrase banking, the history feature mm -hmm. turned on, uh, and obviously dwell free if you can cope with dwell free. Yep. Yep. Um, customizing your keyboards as well. Yep. Um, some people will be able to get quite a lot of benefit out of that. Yep. Um, okay. Um, now we're going to have a webinar shortly on advanced Windows control and how to get the most out of Windows control and that will feature uh, the keyboards in gaze selection. But is it worth us just spending a moment looking at, at those keyboards? Which keyboards? The ones in gaze selection, the standard keyboards. In I, don't, I don't know too much about those keyboards. Let's see. Windows I think we'll control. maybe cover that in the next one but, but, but yeah. do you remember That's that, that there control. is kind of Text communication and typing from your communication software is important uh, and, and still remains the staple for a lot of people. However, what we're now starting to see is that people are using the, the gaze selection keyboards just with, that are included for free within the Windows control software for iGaze users. Uh, so, so come along to the next webinar and we'll look at those keyboards in a bit more depth next time. Oh, you found them. Yes, I did, but I can't hit them because I'm not. I don't have my eye tracker set up right. My gaze. But we will look at those. Uh, we will look at those next time. So to summarise, and uh, uh, we've gone on again <laughs> at, at, at length. Um, let's just summarise quickly. When it comes to text vocabularies and Toby Dynamox, uh, we we split down into emergent literacy. Those people who cannot just be thrown at the deep end in a keyboard and need guidance and support, symbol support, banking, uh, all of the features we looked at within core first and literacy, the idea to, of browsing over words that are being predicted so that you can listen to them before selecting. It, that's an extremely important user group to us. 
Uh, and then those people who have established literacy have very different requirements and needs and do need to do things, as you say, like uh, customize keyboards and all those sorts of things. Uh, use intelligent abbreviation expansion uh, who are putting speed above accuracy a lot of the time as well uh, and just blasting their messages out. So, so, you know, we have our work cut out to make sure that we offer people both of those options at all times and hopefully some form of smooth transition between one and the other. So I hope some of that has got across, has come across tonight. Um, I'm just going to check the questions section. Uh, Somebody's saying, I had one of the reps out showing me an eye series with Communicator 5 and eye gaze. We were having problems calibrating due to my glasses. Um, we're going to have a, or a clinic night in four weeks' time uh, on calibration success. It's maybe good if you just drop me a quick email directly, hector.minto at tobydynavox.com, and I will give you some hints and tips on calibrating and glasses. Uh, Charlotte's asking, are we going to look at SonoKey briefly? I think we can look at SonoKey briefly. Uh, maybe we should just do that. Yeah, we quick. can do that. So is it worth just saying how we feel about SonoKey compared to the modular approach nowadays? Well, actually, uh, US and UK English are a modular SonoKey, which is what we based the... Um, communicator apps off of um, is we first had a very static SonoKey version and then we made a modular SonoKey and then this iteration is um, kind of identical to SonoKey. It, it covers most of the basic features SonoKey has um, and let, 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 Let's is, go into it and take a look. Just let's do this. Yeah, I think so as well. Just a thing to note, one of the main things we were, or a couple of the main things you're missing with the um, Communicator 5 apps when we first launched was alarm page set and go to desktop access, which are things that uh, Sonoki had that we did not in the new implementation. So we've added those. If we're missing anything else, just send us an email or let us know if you're missing something from Sonoki, because we are trying to make sure we do cover all of that I mean as well. I, I, but just to be clear, Chris, Sonar Key has been around for about six years now, hasn't it? Six or seven years. Yeah, maybe a bit longer. Yeah, and it's had a few, I mean, it's certainly been long, around as long as I have <laughs> within Toby Dynamox. Yeah. Uh, and obviously, it, it, it has changed somewhat. But obviously, what it's got, it's got a big following. There are a lot of people out there using Sonar Key. Oh, uh, yeah. And so we and need we to make, to support it. And we will continue to support it. And we need to make sure that it, it, it stays the product and the successful product it's been. However, I think if somebody was coming new to our systems today, we would start to steer them towards the modular approach of just a home page. Is that a fair comment? Yes, that, that's exactly where we're at with it, is that we want to continue supporting SonoKey for people who are using it or, and have invested time into learning it. Um, but that if you're a new user, getting your first version of communicator that we hope the modular version would be everything you would need. But you may decide it's not, <laughs> and that's also okay. Yes. Yeah, can I see your screen? I don't have your screen. Oh, yeah, sorry. I stopped sharing it, so I was just, I thought we were done and wrapping up, so sorry about that. No problem. So just to be also clear, you can have SonoKey and the modular system. That's also absolutely fine. So SonoKey can yep. be one of the offerings on your home page. So if we open SonoKey. You'll see SonoKey has many of the same features that we had on the home page, um, calendar and email and um, you have your Skype client, Facebook. It also has the ability to um, like do the quick talk feature, which is similar to the speak that we use that we have on the Communicator 5 homepage. Um, the difference is the keyboards in let's see, that's not where I wanted to go, sorry.
wanted to hit that settings. I'm so used to just going into the quick menu for settings. But in Sonokey, you have keyboard settings where you can choose between these three included in Sonokey keyboards, but they're not as editable or they're not as easily editable as the communicator versions of them are. And these are the only ones you can choose from. You can't have dwell free set up for um, Sonokey at the moment. Um, so yeah, you can choose your keyboard in here. There are two different themes as well um, for visuals. Uh, the gaze friendly is supposed to eye track a little bit better. That's an interesting thing that people don't necessarily know about. So, so eye trackers sometimes get false glints. So if the screen is too bright, you lose a little accuracy. Uh, and so the the dark blue here, as opposed to the white of the, of the traditional sonar key, we, we actually found worked better for people using eye tracking and allowed them to calibrate more readily, uh, gave them less distractions on their eyes from the bright screen. So uh, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's, that's worth it's knowing about. also one of the reasons we have a lot of dark keyboards and communicator, um, like in the communicator apps world, that those darker keyboards were also designed for the same reason. Okay, um, so the idea here is that again you have a modular front page and that allows you to, uh, you know, to, to edit that and change things yourself. Uh, we have things like intelligent infrared pages which are pre-set up and just prompt you through recording for things like TV screens and all those things. But as we're talking about text communication, one thing I'd quite quick, uh, like you to show just quickly Chris is the system keyboards within the Windows page sets. Uh, so within Windows. Mm -hmm. And then when we open up a specific application. This gives you a keyboard specific to that application or one that we felt was kind of best designed for that application. That is one thing that people do still like about uh, Sonoki that, that's still there. Um, the word prediction has now changed, of course. So if you're in Communicator 5, this is using the Swift key as opposed to the traditional word prediction system. Uh, if people are still in love with the old word prediction system and want to customize dictionaries, then we would roll you back to Communicator 4, and then Sonoki would become your default text communication symbol. Uh, sorry, setup. OK. Yeah. Uh, are there any specific questions about Sonoki while we're here? I know that there are some people on the line. I think I saw Simon here earlier who, uh, because you've been with us for a few years, Simon, you, you've actually gone to the effort of reprogramming all your keyboards within Sono key to include things like copy and paste of, of text and things like this. Uh, what we're saying about Communicator 5 is you would only have to do that job once. So here you would program every single keyboard to, to give you the things you wanted. One of the advantages of 5 is that, is that you don't, no longer have to do that anymore. Um, Charlotte, you had the question about seeing Sono key. Is there anything specific you'd like us to, to, to show you? Let's just wait for Charlotte to... Nope, I think we're finished. Right, it's late here in Sweden. It's quarter to, is that quarter to 11? It is quarter to 11. Yes, it is. <laughs> and in Norway. Uh, thanks so much for coming. As usual, clinic night came with uh, the usual chaos halfway through as I lost audio and lost internet connection. Um, but I think we got through it. I've got two recordings, so we'll stitch them into some kind of a, a video for people to watch another time. I've learned stuff again. Not, not I to say know. you weren't needed, Hector, but I think we managed okay. <laughs> I'm very happy to be redundant. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> uh, thanks very much. Um, as I say, the next one is going to be on advanced eye gaze windows control. Actually, I think we're going to cover switch windows control as well in the next webinar. So we're just going to do advanced windows control for switch access and eye gaze. In four weeks' time, we're going to have one on how to get the best calibrations. And then in six weeks' time, we are going to go straight back to symbol communication symbol uh, communication 
pages again. So we're going to go full cycle and rerun some earlier clinic nights because I know people, you know, our audience is growing all the time. So we're going to go back to do some more symbol vocabs. Chris, thank you very much for your time. I always like listening to you because I get to learn things that even I didn't uh, know, which is great. <laughs> so uh, well, thank I'm you. always happy to be here. So just let me know next time I'm needed. Uh, you're welcome to come to all of them. <laughs> I don't know everything. I, I'm only helpful sometimes. Yeah. All right. Well, we, we will we will call in different experts as we go along. Uh, great. Thanks very much. I'll see you soon. Bye, everyone. Bye.